Welcome to Millennial Murmurs, a podcast addressing millennial career questions, queries, and curiosities to help them navigate the jungle of the modern working world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's podcast on the topic of mentorship. I'm your host, Nathan Pierce, and today my guest is Laurie Lepran. Laurie is a partner in Major Lindsay in Africa's Tokyo office, and prior to her career in recruiting, Laurie was an associate at Cleary Got Lead in both New York and Tokyo. Laurie is somebody who has always been a great mentor to me and had a really interesting career, so I'm really delighted to have her here today on the show. Also, just to note, all views are her own. So, Laurie, welcome. Thanks so much, Nathan. I really appreciate you inviting me to have this chat with you. Hopefully, uh, it will be helpful for our listeners and lead to more questions in the future. Um, So just a little bit about me. Um, I started from a very young age telling everybody I knew that I wanted to be a sewer, uh, primarily because my best friend's father was an IP lawyer, and they always got the new video game systems before anyone else. And so I thought that seemed like a great profession. Um, But then, I guess, as I got a little older, this and a strong interest in international affairs led me to go to Georgetown, where I received a dual degree in law and a master's in foreign service. Uh, Then I went on and clerked on the Delaware Chancery Court and afterwards joined Cleary Gottlieb as a summer associate uh, as an associate um, and spent about five years there in total, as you mentioned, working in both the New York and Tokyo offices. Um, It was kind of interesting for me to end up in Tokyo because I'd always focused my studies on Europe and European languages. But um, uh-huh. <laughs> when I got to Cleary, I knew I had an interest in Tokyo. And so I announced my hopes and intentions very early on, started studying Japanese and was lucky enough to have them send me there. Um, then after working there for just over five years, I took a hiatus from the law life, had two children. It was a stay at home mom, uh, probably the hardest job I ever had and yeah. decided to switch to recruiting. So I opened up Major Lindsay Africa's office in Tokyo about 13 years ago. And since then, I've been assisting everybody from associates to partners and in-house counsel uh, in their careers in both Japan and more recently, Korea, since 2011. Fantastic. That's Yeah, there's, there's so much there. I'm curious, was there any particular video game that you were really jealous of when you saw your friend's dad bringing them early? Well, now this is going to age me. So very much the okay, early, yeah, you saying. know, Atari, uh, Donkey Kong, Nintendo stuff, you know. That's <laughs> so, amazing. That's really funny. That's cool. A little bit past the uh, Pong game, which was our first video console. <laughs> amazing. Um, yeah, I remember when computers were coming in, uh, when I was younger, and those like giant, giant floppy disk type things. I'm sure loads of people don't even know what a floppy disk is now. But uh, anyway, <laughs> so you, so you've obviously, I mean, all the amazing stuff that you've done and and travelled to, and and you know that's that's quite a career so far. So I imagine you've had mentorships, uh, you know, had mentors, sorry, throughout your career, and it's been part of of your career journey. Have, have you got anything to share on your experiences overall of of whether or not mentors have been important to you? Sure. So basically, you know, it's interesting. When I started working as a lawyer at Cleary, most of the mentoring that I received was really informal in nature uh, from the partners and senior associates who I was working with, um, all of whom, by chance, perhaps, were men, actually. Um, I don't really recall there being a formal mentorship program at that time. But then when I moved to Tokyo, um, I became actually more involved in external organizations where I could find mentorship as a female attorney. Um, And I joined an organization in Tokyo that was then called the Foreign Women Lawyers Association. Um, And that's actually turned into a new organization called Women in Law Japan, um, which I continue to be actively engaged with to this day. And I think that that's been, you know, a really great place um, to have both informal and more formal mentorship programs for particularly young 
um, female lawyers. Um, and I'm a true believer. Um, it's also important to have mentors in your own company, but it's great to also, you know, be able to access this um, in other places in the community as well. Um, and I guess, you know, more recently, I think being a recruiter in some ways is like being a mentor every day. Um, so I do find that I develop close career counseling relationships with many of the lawyers who I work with. Um, and I enjoy that aspect of the job tremendously. Yeah, fantastic. So I'm curious as well, um, sort of, did you, do you think there's a point in your career where you switch from mentee to mentor? Um, you know, MLA have, have got a formal mentorship program and, um, you know, we connected through that at one point as well. But but also informally continue to do so, I feel. And so I, I, I'm curious kind of what made you decide to, to do that. And also if you, yeah, if you felt there was a, a point when you sort of switched, um, but I also feel like it's a lifelong sort of learning lesson, um, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And I think it just, it depends on the topic in the area, right? That you're seeking that guidance in and where you have something that you can also give in exchange. Um, so definitely um, well, when I made my transition from being a lawyer to then being a recruiter, um, you know, I had never um, even dreamed of recruiting <laughs> before mm -hmm. I started discussing the opportunity to open our Tokyo office. And so I was um, quite new to the business and needed Needed, all of a sudden going from something that I felt like I had developed a really strong skill set and expertise base in as a lawyer, I started completely fresh as a recruiter, um, was lucky uh -huh. enough to have many great mentors that helped me around the world in our company to get me through my first couple years and learn what I was doing. And then, you know, of course, I've been doing this now for 13 years. And so I feel like now I have a lot to give back um, in terms of being a recruiting mentor, but also um, a legal mentor, hopefully, as well for some young lawyers. Yeah, absolutely. And can I just ask, in, in, when you made that quick career change and that career switch, did you rely on, um, you know, mentors in your network to help kind of make that decision or um, was there a big um, impact in, in that way? <laughs> That's, it's an Sorry, interesting it's question. <laughs> no, no, no. It's an interesting question, which is why I paused. I mean, I think it's funny. I was working with a senior recruiter at that time um, and thinking about going back to being a lawyer. And mm -hmm. um, I actually got a lot of advice from that person on the recruiting business, which I... Yeah frankly, somewhat disregarded and decided um, to become a recruiter. But, you know, it's funny, I have received a lot of advice. Um, another moment in my life where this happened actually was um, when I was making a decision to go to Japan as a younger lawyer. And I, we sought out, my husband and I were both thinking of transitioning to Tokyo from our New York law firms. And we sought out a uh, professional mentoring advice from a very senior lawyer who happened to be the father of the person who I had done my clerkship with as a co-clerk. And he told okay. us, you know, he gave us very good advice. He looked at my husband and he said, this is the perfect career decision for you. And these are the reasons why. And then he turned and he looked at me and he said, Basically, you're out of your mind. Um, this is not going to advance your career progression for these different reasons, particularly since I didn't speak Japanese at the time. And the interesting thing, I think, in both that situation and the more recent one when I was becoming a recruiter is that I'm not sure that I had fully shared all of what I was thinking with the person. And so that somewhat uh -huh. skewed the advice that I was getting. Um, but it still was extremely helpful as a sounding board because even hearing advice from a mentor that you don't necessarily agree with, it really helps you go through the internal process of decision making and realize what you value and what's important in making your decision. And so in both cases, um, the mentor advice was extremely helpful, even if I didn't end up following what they had suggested to me. Um, so. Maybe an interesting take on mentoring. 
Yeah, no, it definitely is. I think I think there's two things that really stand out to me there. I think firstly, we always talk about career journeys, um, you know, in a kind of greater sense in what we do. And I think when you're, especially when you're an early recruiter, you kind of go through all these struggles of there's so many things kind of going on. I, I feel like when you're on that journey, but it's also funny, like how life and careers and everything, you just can't plan as much as you really want to. Um, you know, you can have a rough plan, but things always happen and come along that you kind of don't expect. Um, and then that whole kind of giving, giving all of the detail and giving yourself to somebody uh, in that way, I think is really, it's really hard to do because they're obviously professional relationships and, you know, sometimes you, yeah, there's just so many dynamics that I think it's, I think that's really interesting experience to share um, that people probably don't think about often. So I, I appreciate that. Um, so I think you touched on it just now in some ways, but, you know, are there any other things that you think mentorship provides people for, you know, overall career direction? Um, it sounds like it's been very impactful on your career overall. You know, I mean, I think mentoring is definitely very impactful on our lives when we are the mentee, but also as the mentor. And so I learn new things every day um, from, you know, the more junior people that I talk to. And as you know, I try to give them advice as well. Um, it often it has an impact on me and how I feel and think and, you know, career decisions that I make as well. So um, I think it's definitely integral in many aspects of all of our lives as well as our careers at every stage. Yeah. Fantastic. And so I'm curious if you have any observations that you want to share and you can be as fun as possible. Um, you know, when you look at kind of Millennials in the workplace and, you know, as we're approaching Gen Z in the next few years coming in, um, what, what things do you think they bring to kind of the workplace dialogue or to the table? And what things do you think they just miss um, that you learn kind of over time? Sure. Um, so I think uh, on the plus side, I feel that the younger generation is filled with, you know, highly creative, tech savvy, socially conscious young lawyers um, who bring all sorts of new ideas to law firms and in-house departments. Um, perhaps on the less positive side, I sometimes feel that the current law firm economics have made many young lawyers feel like striving for partnership is not feasible. And so they don't take some of the early steps um, that perhaps my generation took when we were young lawyers that would make it actually entirely possible for them to become partners and also to view this as an attractive career option. Um, and I think, you know, one of the most important things that I've learned at MLA is that sales is not a dirty word and that business development is, you know, something that can be really enjoyable and beneficial to both parties involved in it. Um, I'm not sure that that resonates with some younger lawyers uh, who are more focused on, um, you know, just the being excellent legal practitioners and that that will take them to the next steps in their career. And I think they may because of this, close off some paths um, early on that might actually be very appealing to them when they're somewhat older. Yeah. Yeah, I love that you said that, that whole, uh, like, I think the word sales just conjures up all these images of, like, these kind of cold call boxes, Wolf of Wall Street type places. And you're right. I mean, I think that, uh, I think as, as associates develop in their careers and people generally, you know, you realize that you're offering a product and a service and, and part of that needs selling and people need selling too and they need services and things like that. And I think it's something early on that's really hard to grasp for the concept and how to do it. Um, I think that's, that, yeah, I, I fully agree with that. I think it's such a such a valid point. Um, and I'm curious as well, you, you know, your, your children are one's going off to college and one's at kind of towards end of high school. Is there anything you think, well, that you've learned from them or um, that, you know, I'm sure they've learned lots from you that you think they've impacted their future career choices and your career choices or decisions? So, you know, has that played any kind of role in a 
So it's almost like a reverse mentorship type way or just something you didn't kind of expect to happen. Sure. So my two teenagers um, are highly creative individuals. So they're very unlike their two lawyer parents. <laughs> um, both of us <laughs> were on very straight career tracks um, and they are true individuals. And I think what I've really learned is I see them focusing on their passions, um, whether for my daughter, it's writing or for my son, music and, you know, really tried to support them in their beliefs that they can find jobs in the future um, that will fit these interests and passions. Um, and one of the reasons I think that I support them in this wholeheartedly is I've seen too many people who have become lawyers by default and then struggle to excel um, in their careers and to be happy because of this. And I feel like my kids have shown me that you need to try lots of different things to figure out what you love doing, but also what you're good at doing. Um, and there, you know, I think even if you go to law school by default, um, there's so many different directions that a legal career can take. It's actually, you know, a degree that is probably one of the most flexible degrees out there because what it does is it teaches you how to think when you go to law school. And I really feel that young lawyers should focus on finding, you know, what suits them as individuals and not be scared to change directions in their career if they're unhappy in a particular sector of the legal profession, because there might be something else out there that just suits them better. Um, yeah, and I hope that my children do that when they figure out whatever way they're going <laughs> to um, find their professions in the future. Yeah, maybe they'll come full circle and both end up as, as lawyers. <laughs> um, yeah. So in terms of, so that concept generally, reverse mentorship, and if you think about it on a wider scale, like I know some firms, um, you know, have introduced the idea of these kind of very junior associates sort of mentoring senior partners. Um, I just wondered if you, what your thoughts were on that kind of idea and if you think there's value in it or if it kind of misses the boat on anything. Sure. I mean, so personally, I haven't taken part in any kind of formal reverse mentoring program, although I think it naturally should be a two way conversation, you know, whenever you have a mentor mentee relationship. Um, so even Nathan, you know, when you were my mentee, you pushed me several times <laughs> in different directions <laughs> to get outside my comfort zone um, to do this podcast today. Um, you know, I think we did a YouTube video about Korea a couple right. of years back. I, I certainly, that. yeah, I would never have done that. Um, but for you really, you know, stretching me. And so I do believe that, you know, if you, can either informally or formally have that type of um, two-way mentoring street without ruffling any feathers of the more senior people. You know, I think that's a really important thing to do. And I'm certainly also a big supporter of the 360 performance reviews that I think, you know, many law firms and companies have put into place um, because certainly not just needing mentoring, but we can all learn to be better managers um, as senior people in our field. Um, and I think in order to do that, you have to listen to the more junior people who work with you every day. And so I think those types of two-way relationships are critical. Yeah. The reason I like the formal idea, I think, I think all of that's completely true and valid, is because I think for junior lawyers particularly, I think it gives them a platform to almost be able to speak. I think people worry, you know, about kind of bringing things up or, be, you know, in an informal environment. And that's why I, I think it's just a really interesting concept and why I kind of buy into the idea quite a lot. Because uh, I think it then feeds into culture and everything like that. And I know, you know, the, the culture in APAC is, is excellent. And I think all of that sort of is, is part and parcel of, of that. So, um Moving on to final question now from from my side. So if you kind of, you know, look back, what three pieces of career advice would you give yourself um, as you're starting out in your in your career? So I was thinking about this. I knew you were going to ask this question. <laughs> so I think the three <laughs> things are um, at all stages from the beginning and through the end, be proactive um, be flexible and be patient. 
um, I think in particular with the last one, I thought that I had to have everything worked out and planned out from day one. And you certainly don't have to, and it may be not even helpful to do that. And so as you're patient and flexible, but constantly being proactive to take the opportunities that arise and take you in different directions, um, then I think you can figure out, um, you know, the best way for your career to move forward. And I guess just finally, network, network, network in any profession. It's always helpful. And, you know, people are always out there and willing to talk to you about your career and can really help you along the way. Fantastic. Yeah, that that patience idea really resonated with me when you just said it, because I think it's the same at the start. I kind of need to like tick all the boxes and have a grand plan and everything has changed so much in the past like seven and a half years at, at MLA and it's, it's great and it's exciting and I think as you go through that more and more you get you get more comfortable with that that change and everything um okay so now on the stage where you can ask me two questions about anything so they're surprise questions so so let's see uh let's see what happens Okay, excellent. Well, I think this is in line with kind of some of the reverse mentoring that you're talking about. So what I want to know is how I could have been a better mentor for you. Oh, gosh, that's, that's quite on the side, isn't it? Um, I, don't, I really don't think, like, I'm not just saying this for it. I don't, I don't think there's anything better you could have done. Like, I felt you were always there for me and always able to listen. I thought your advice was, like, very direct um i i was so, like sort of clutching at straws i mean maybe <laughs> having some sort of resources to read or um you know something or, or maybe some reassurance you know when you touched on being able to kind of give your full self there it's not that i didn't feel reassured at all but that extra layer of comfort i think can add even more open dialogue and i think that juniors generally when they're learning I think there's a bit of wanting comfort in in kind of feeling like you're doing the right thing or something like that and so I suppose that's something that I might kind of on reflection think okay that's a really great piece of advice that I'm going to try and apply going forward as well. Excellent. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. I've definitely been accused <laughs> by many people of being too blunt and honest with my views. So, um, but I think that's great. I think that's yeah. one of the things I love about you, though, is that oh. you you know exactly where you stand and you say what you say. And I think it's I think it's great. I think it's really inspiring. I genuinely do. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you. Well, we'll talk about <laughs> this offline later too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I think my other question for you, this one will not put you on the spot nearly as much, is, you know, how do you feel that new technology and social networking platforms can best play a role in mentoring? That's interesting. So I'm a massive online person um, and I've really got comfortable with that more and more as I've gone through my career. I think I think part of it is. Um, Generation in the sense of like who I'm trying to attract on the candidate side um, and kind of provide a service to my client. And that's how my generation engages. And I think if you look at how that can transform into, you know, a kind of mentor mentee relationship, um, you know, I think things like checking in by text, um, you know, kind of even things like memes or links, you know, I think it's it's such a you know, younger generations are so information heavy and almost information overloaded. Um, but I think it can also just help break down barriers. As, you know, whether it, it's right or wrong, I think it can actually, you can build a really good rapport with somebody over text. It's almost like dating, right? It's almost like online dating um, with people swiping left and right and everything like that. I think it provides a comfort level. Um, and I, I know a lot of people say like, oh, it's, you know, people can't, talk anymore and have a conversation but I you know I think some of that is like social anxiety and anxiety generally and pressure and just the way that we function and it's different and so I do think there's opportunity there to you can have all of these really deep relationships that people feel are superficial because they're by you know text or email whatever but actually I think the connectivity is a really nice way because 
it does it's not interruptive it's not intrusive um and it just gives people time to process and respond to the information and so Mm -hmm. that's why i'm kind of a really big fan of digital platforms and things like that that i think can can actually be be used for real positive well, I've finally expanded beyond iMessage to WhatsApp, so <laughs> hopefully I'm on my way to better communications with the next generation. But thank you. That, that's a great idea to do more of that. No worries. No worries. <laughs> great. Well, well, thank you very much for joining me today, Laurie. And I, I, that was amazing advice and information that I think everybody will greatly appreciate. So um, stay well and, uh, and take care. And thank you so much again. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Millennial Murmurs. Follow us at the Legal Talent Talk Network and enjoy topics affecting legal talent today.